Greetings YouTube, today we're going to take a saunter down memory lane and take a look at the mutations in the 1992 edition of my favorite uh, post-apocalyptic game, Gamma World. This at the time was known as 4th edition. This is far ahead of the actual release of the game, Dungeons and Dragons 4th edition. Um, but in 1992, this was the 4th edition iteration of the Gamma World system, which I believe has gone through seven or eight iterations by now. I'm not I'm not positive I have a cat going to a place that she's not supposed to go. I don't want her walking behind the the, the monitor because she'll break things. Um, she just wants love, I guess. She just wants love. Yes, you do. You want love. I'm going to go away at the moment because I need to do some video stuff. So we're going to take a saunter down memory lane with the mutations here. Now, preface it for this. Uh, there are four types of playable races in the 1992 edition of um, Gamma World. There are Pierce Train Humans, which will not count at the moment because they don't have mutations. Ah, she just doesn't want to go away. Um, there are uh, Mutant Humans, uh, New Humans, which have mutations. Um, there are Mutant Animals, which can be both completely normal looking, like this one, and have mutations, or can be anthropomorphic to one degree or another. Um, if you choose the normal animal um, va, uh, look, you get an extra physical mutation for um, playing an animal that doesn't have any any digits or the ability to speak. Um, but let's face it, if you're going to do that, you probably most people are going to be playing some kind of telepath or hope there's a telepath in the party. Um, and then lastly, there are mutant plants, which are the weirdest option, I will freely admit. So each mutation has a little blurb that tells you um, in, in a uh, thumbnail sketch of what criteria the mutation has um, and I'm going to break this video up into two sections and two different videos because this is 20 pages of mutation and I don't want to do 20 pages of mutations all in one video um, so we're going to start up with this is alphabetic some of these are going to be physical mutations some are going to be mental mutations some will be defects which things you don't want but can add some flair and interest to your character and then some are ones specific to plants um, so we're going to start out with Achilles' heel. Shocker, that one's a defect. And the Achilles' heel in these are um, for physical and plant mutations. So you can't actually have a mental Achilles' heel, which is kind of interesting. They do have mutations in here which are bad mental mutations, but it's interesting that Achilles' heels are strictly considered to be physical or plant-based uh, mutations. And the basic idea is you have something that makes your character... Um, vulnerable to, uh, to in, in some manner, um, like, you know, a weak spot. And if you get, somebody gets a natural 20, they hit that weak spot kind of thing. You get the idea. Then we have adaption. And this is a plant mutation. It's automatic. And it allows the, the player character to create a defense to something that they've been exposed to. Hit with fire, suddenly the bark on your tree is now fireproof. And you can have up to three of these at one time, and you can swap them out at a future date. So if you're exposed to a new mutation that, that is now considered to be dangerous to you in a particular adventure, you can switch out and now have immunity to that as opposed to one you'd had earlier, which you're not being exposed to at the moment, uh, which is kind of cool. I actually built a, a character around that. He didn't actually know he had the power. It was a secret ability that he was over time becoming more and more invulnerable to the risks of the world. The campaign didn't, he didn't know actually the campaign lasted long enough for it had that to have reached few fruition, but he didn't last long enough in the campaign for that to reach fruition. Um, then we have air sail. This is both for uh, physical and for plants, and it's just what it sounds like. The, the wings on a flying squirrel are an example of an air sail. It's an ability to, to glide, <clears throat> as opposed to having proper wings. And gliding, gliding, you don't have to have any, there's no power usage of that. As long as you've got height, you can fly for, you know, X. Does it just give you a glide ratio? Okay. It doesn't give a glide ratio. I would probably give it a glide ratio of uh, 10 to 1. That's a good glide ratio in my book. Um, and we have allergy, uh, which is a defect, obviously. And physical and plants, so plants and humans can, uh, or animals can both have this mutation. Now, some of these are completely, absolutely normal, like pollen. Hopefully, that's not a really dangerous one because pollen's everywhere. Though it is 
also seasonal. I'm not going to have the pollen in the wintertime. Um, clay, that's that's a weird one because let's face it, how often do you get exposed to clay? Even if you're walking around outside a lot, clay isn't the most common substance in the world. Um, oil, that's a little... You have to be more specific. Um, then you have specific plants, digested meats, silver or gold. Silver I kind of like. Um, or is, was, there was a weird one in here. Bone. Let's hope that one's for plants, because if you're allergic to bones and you're an animal, you die in utero. Um, then we have Allure Mint. This is only available to plants, and this gives off a sweet-smelling fragrance. It literally lures someone into you and lets you uh, allows you to essentially affect them, uh, their, their reactions to you. We have Anti-Life Leech. Now, this is both available to animals and plants. An anti-life leech is really specific. Now, from the title, it means it's against the mutation. Life leech. Now, life leech is a, a literal, you are vampiring, vampiring off of somebody around you. You're leeching out their life force. It's an area effect. Um, you can't, it's non-directional. Uh, it's omnidirectional, rather. You don't get to choose who is and isn't affected by it. Um, so, you, essentially, you're a living grenade. Uh, but... In all the time I've played the game, or games like this, I haven't seen it used that often. I have used it, both as a player and as a, as a GM, but if you have a mutation specifically against that, that's a really lame slot of mutation. Yeah, you're great, you're not, you're going to be able to reverse that and harm the person trying to harm you, but that's, that's very specific. That's, um, that's kind of a lame one in my book. You have attraction disorder, uh, a defect. Uh, the opposite of allurement, you draw things towards you. You smell particularly tasty. Not a great uh, mutation to have. Beguiling. Uh, this is a mental attack. Um, you know, basically, it, it's, it makes you very, very charming. You get to like just tell people, look, you want to help me, don't you? So, you know, it's a charm person spell. Um, body control, physical implant. Um, you can get to boost a particular physical trait. So you could have your physic, your strength, your dexterity, or your constitution, and you could bump them up. Um, and then you'd have to switch off which one you wanted to improve. Useful, um, because it gives you flexibility. There are other mutations here that give higher boosts to permanently to a specific uh, physical trait. But this allows you to have flexibility. And there are people who like that kind of flexibility. Um, then we have uh, body change, which is considered a defect, and it's physical. I don't know why you can't have physical body changes for plants. Maybe if you're playing a mutant plant, it's already freaking weird. So essentially, this is means you, your your character is not a Marvel ghost mutant. Uh, mutant. When I say ghost mutant, I don't mean you're actually a ghost. It's a mutant. I mean you are. Um, uh, you're a mutant that does not look like a mutant. You know, lots of Marvel mutants, like Wolverine does not look like a mutant if you don't have it. He doesn't have his claws out. He just looks like a guy. Short, fuzzy dude. Um, so this essentially means you, your character has, there's a little list here uh, of things that you have to, you can roll on. But I would get, I, I often left that open to the character. What the player? What do you want your character to do? Pick something that means that you stand out in a crowd, so you cannot pretend you are not a mutant. Um, I like that kind of thing. Um, and and if you get it, I wouldn't like I I never really count that against your mutant total mutation total. So if you were allowed to have five mutations and you one of them you rolled with body change, that's a you still have to have it, but it's a freebie. You don't you don't have to pay for that one. It just means you look unusual. So it doesn't immediately give you any de benefit or detriment. It just means you can't hide you mutate who, that you are a mutant. Um, carapace, uh, available for both animals and plants, and that's just what it sounds like. It's a some kind of armor. Pangolin scales, turtle shell, you get the kind of thing. Carnivorous jaws, available to plants. You get to be a Venus flytrap, except they're much, much more dangerous. Uh, chameleon power, available to animals and plants. It's not just what it is. You get to blend into the background as an activated power. It's a yook, and it's the predator. You are now invisible. Not totally invisible, but close to invisible. Um, chemical susceptibility, a defect. 
means that if you were exposed to specific chemicals, um, you have uh, a much less chance of, of resisting them. Confusion mental, um, which allows you to essentially do the confusion spell from D and D. You know, your your feeble minded kind of thing. You know, your they they may attack the nearest creature. They may just kind of like just go into a little mini coma, or they just stand there and do nothing. Like a cat hair all over my face. What a shock. Um, contact poison sap. Surprise! That goes for all plants only, and it does what it says. Um, quite useful, particularly if your character has vines. Um, death field generation. This is mental, and it's a boom, and you just do damage to a whole lot of people all at once. It can be very devastating, but it's something that your character is going to have to be alone to use unless your party members somehow have some way of defending themselves. Maybe they all have anti life leaks. Um, Density control others allows you to control the density, physical density of another entity. Um, so you can uh, essentially make them smaller or larger. So, and smaller things, of course, they're more durable, but they move more slowly because now they're more dense. Our larger things, they can move a little more faster, but they're they're more vulnerable because they have less density. And the counterpart. Density control self. You get the idea. That one's a physical and plant mutation. That's not mental. Um, it's kind of interesting. You think about it. If you turn somebody else dense, change their density, it's mental. But if you do it to yourself, that's a weird mutation. It's the, oh, okay. Yeah. I think it's an argument for making that physical, that mental as well. Devolution. Essentially, you strip other mutants of their abilities. Kind of dangerous. And I wouldn't necessarily make it permanent. That, in my book, is making it too strong. But temporarily stripping someone of their abilities, thats I have no problem with that. Um, diminished sense. Uh, that's a defect. It's a physical defect. And it means that one of the classic five sentences, sentences has uh, some kind of de uh, uh, deficit to it. Um, direction sense. <sighs> this is good, I guess. But you know, you always know where you are and where you've been. So if you're awake and I, and I block this room, this chair, as my start point, anywhere I go, I will always be able to find one way back. Very useful, and you always kind of know where the, you know, the, the true north is kind of thing. I don't know how applicable it is to games. I can't remember ever using that power ever. Um, dissolving jaws. Juices, rather. Jaws. Oh, dissolving jaws. Oh, my jaw dissolved. Dissolving juices. Um, plant, again, that kind of makes sense. Some plants have the ability to, to, to do that. Uh, the pitcher plant, for example. Uh, displacement, which is a mental, and it's a dimension door. You get the short distance kind of a thing where you're shifting. People can't find you kind of thing. That kind of, kind of vibe. Um, double pain defect, not a good one. Not a good, not a good one here. Um, you, you suffer twice the amount of pain from wounds. Fuck. Dual brain. I always loved this one. You literally have two brains inside your skull. And yes, I would. you require the person to have a skull that definitely does not look normal. Um, I always kind of like the, the alien vibe, so that the back of the skull is elongated in the back. But you also could do a cone head. Um, and it gives you extra uh, mutations because you have more brain matter. Uh, but you also definitely don't look like a normal being of your type. Duality allows you to do two very dissimilar things at the same time. So they give an example of somebody who got a sword in one hand and they're picking a lock with another. You can do two things that have absolutely no connection to each other and still be able to achieve both of them simultaneously. Um, electrical generation, uh, both for animals and plants. Ah, the cat hair is everywhere. Um, which is pretty much your electric heel. You've got a, you can generate electrical vibes. Empathy. Um, this is all. This is a very. This is a. It's activated, but it's. It's. You can sense, do senses, but you can also force um, an emotional uh, state onto another being, which is kind of useful, particularly if you're trying to intimidate someone or you're trying to smooth talk them. Uh, energy absorption, which is allow you to, essentially do. Uh, you get to ignore a certain amount of damage coming into you. Oh, sorry, my screen just, oh, I'm really waxing poetic here, so 
wow, we're not even that far in. Well, it's going to be a long freaking video, folks. Um, and uh, the different classic, you know, radiation and electrical lasers, things like that. So they list cold as an energy type. I know that's okay in fantasy worlds, but cold isn't an energy type. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I don't know if I ever noticed that before, but yeah, cold is not an energy type. It's because of the lack of energy. Um, energy metamorphosis. You can convert damage from a particular physical attack and use it to heal your, yourself. So if somebody, you have energy metamorphosis, uh, uh, a fire, first number of points of that, it heals you, and X points over that actually harm you. So low level effect damage uh, would actually be a benefit. So if you have fire and there's a campfire, you could use that to heal yourself free of charge. Um, so it could be spammed in the right context. Uh, that one's going to, you're going to have to make sure that a GM is aware of that the character has that ability and not forget it. Energy reflect them. You have a particular type of energy that um, you can just, it comes in, comes right back out again. Um, became quite useful in that regard. Uh, energy sensitivity defect, again, you are sensitive to a particular energy type and it damages you in an additional amount. Explosive seeds, plants only, unless you have seeds. Do you have seeds? Um, so you essentially you grow grenades. Um, fade out defect, uh, narcolepsy. You just pass, you fall out. You, you, under certain circumstances, you just pass out. Um, fear generation, mental, allowing you to actually induce fear, a particular fear in, in people's minds. Uh, the kind of thing that scared, Scarecrow would love. Finger vines, uh, just what they sound like. There you have vines which allow you to manipulate objects if you are a plant. Because a lot, a lot, a lot of the plants don't have manipulative and, um, uh, extremities, so this allows you to have them. Force field generation, pretty much Sue Storm kind of thing. You can generate force fields. Fruit! This is obviously only for plants, um, though it would be interesting if your character could grow fruit and they were a bear. Um, and there's different kinds of uh, options in here, the types of fruit that you can produce. Um, I would only allow for someone to produce one of them. Like, you have, you produce sustenance fruits. Essentially, you're a walking uh, uh, ration pack. Uh, gas bags, plants, essentially you get to blow up a balloon and float around. We had a great character, an NPC, years ago. Uh, called, I don't want you there, cat. I know you want to be there. I know you want to be there, but bad place for you to be. Uh, we had a character, One Way Green Magic, and One Way Green Magic could uh, float because they had gas bags. Um, but of course, One Way, because they could only go in one direction of the wind. They had no ability to control where they went. Um, so yeah, I loved One Way. One Way is great. Um, uh, gas generation, you have a skunk's glands, and there are different kinds of stuff that you can generate so that you uh, can create an offensive attack. Ah, she is being very needy today. I don't quite understand why. Yes, kitten. Keep going, kitten. Keep, yep, keep going. I want to know where she is, but she's not over here. Um, then we have gills. Pretty straightforward. You can breathe underwater. You can breathe underwater, um, which is good. You know, particularly if you normally can't breathe underwater. Um, hands of power, zap, fire, electricity. That you get a specific one. Um, heightened balance, uh, very uh, passive, automatic, but you you are very good at balancing. You can run across, uh, you know, tight ropes at full speed without slowing down. Uh, heightened mental attribute boost permanent boost to one mental attribute heightened physical attribute again a permanent boost to one physical attribute heightened precision makes you more capable in combat um, you get to focus your energy uh, your attacks in a way that makes them uh, more uh, useful so when you're using a range attack you know exactly where to hit your enemy heightened sentences a physical uh, animal or plant you get one particular sense which is much better than other people, the opposite of the uh, deficit, as I mentioned earlier, and you get to, there's, again, it's the five classics. Uh, heightened speed, you get a boost, permanent boost speed. Um, uh, horns or antlers, and that's pretty much, it's a permanent, you get to have um, a, uh, a set of horns or antlers that you, you can use for an attack. Also, obviously, you don't look like a normal person. 
hostility field defect. You just piss people off. I've known humans have had this. They always seem to annoy everyone around them. Illusion generation, a mental mutation, and does just what it says. It allows you to create illusions. Uh, immunity, so you have one particular uh, uh, a classic attack which you are immune to, and they give a little less. So of course a GM could come up with ones of their own. Infravision, pretty straightforward. You can see heat. Intuition, you kind of spidey sense kind of thing. Um, kinetic absorption, that you absorb kinetic energy. Um, so you can blunt the force of things coming at you. I get the feeling that because a mutant, Marvel mutant has that capacity, or I think I'm, I'm pretty sure. I think Bouncing Boy from DC Universe probably did too. I think that's what he's called. Or Balloon Boy or something. But yeah, you get to absorb some incoming. We had a little we had a mutant uh, race in a game. They were more like animal like. Essentially, they were little soccer balls, that, and, and, and they absorbed kinetic energy as food. So they would roll around and intentionally, like, bump into things or put themselves into situations where they rolled off things because the impacts would feed them. Um, levitation, pretty straightforward. You get to float. There's life leech, mental. Um, you, again, you get to suck the life out of other people. Um, and that is quite dangerous, but I can't remember it being used all that often. I, I think I only used it a couple of times. and I never really wanted it as a player. I think it was kind of a just not my vibe. Magnetic control, you have a very limited version of what Magneto's got. Um, mass mind, you are able to essentially boost other people's mental powers. So you are a support character in that regard. But if the other person has a mutation that's very particularly useful, this can be very helpful. And you can very much help your party members do a lot, be a lot more successful with your mutations. So it's so it's, you have to activate it, but you are definitely a passive support character. Mental Blast, yeah, you know, it's a psionic attack. Zap, and the person has suffered pain because you've gotten inside their cranium and scrambled their brain. Um, mental Control, you can literally take control of another person or animal. You just, you. this is a classic, you know, we, we've seen this many times in science fiction and fantasy. Mental invisibility. Now this one's interesting. So essentially you become invisible because you're affecting the other person's mind. But if you were on camera, the camera would still see you, even though you could be standing in a room and then someone's like, there's no one here. And then somebody on a monitor saying, he's right next to you because you have mentally hidden yourself from them. Um, uh, the shadow had that ability to a certain degree. Mental multiplier. Um, this is again, another, uh, boost to someone else again so a passive a passive ability to help other people mental paralysis you are able to isolate a character a victim's mind from the voluntary motor center of its brain with successful mental attack you so it's a paralysis attack their are their autonomic system still functions but they cannot function other than that mental reflection you get to bounce back mental attacks very useful uh, but situational obviously mental defenselessness not good then there's a mental strength score in this game, and that helps you defend against mental attack. And it's the classic 3 to 18 score in the game. Of course, they go much higher than that if you've got the right kind of mutations and boosts chemicals and things like that. But if you have mental defenselessness, you have a score of 3. You are very vulnerable to mental attacks. Um, metamorphosis. Now, this one is cool because you can uh, transform his body into a duplicate of anyone he touches. That is powerful, um, and can be very useful under certain circumstances. We've seen this many times in in science fiction and comics. Um, molecular molecular disruption. You get to literally break down things along molecular lines. So you're good at destroying things. Um, hopefully, you won't need that thing later because it's gone for good. You've severed the molecular bonds. You're not going to make a nuclear explosion, but you've definitely turned that into dust. Um, and the last one for today is going to be multiple limbs. Obviously, uh, you just have extras. And they don't specify. Oh, they do. The extra legs add two to the character's speed, and any balance of the rolls involves slipping or being knocked over. So you get, you know, uh, 
bull rushes aren't successful against you kind of thing. Uh, extra arms, approved character's manual dexterity. Um, probably also very good for grappling, that kind of thing. So yeah. So, that has been Achilles heels through multiple limbs. Uh, next time we will start out with the ends, because this is the end of the M's. It's a weird phonetic breakdown, but okay. This video has gone on way too long, but I love these kind of things. I love these mutations. This game always made me smile, and I worked up a number of copies of Marvel Mutants with this game, because I think you could probably emulate most of the X-Men with this. Not all of them, but most of them. Because obviously some of the X-Men are Omega levels, and some of the X-Men are far more low level, like Logan, not Omega level mutant. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope that you will join me for next ep the episode, where we tackle the M's through the end of the, 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 end of the list. That is hard to say.